three forces that are being applied to an object. So you can almost imagine, if you wanted, that there was a box in the middle here, and there was a little dude over here pulling it this way, and a little dude here pulling the box this way, and a little dude over here pulling the box this way. And these were the points around the box, okay? So it's not three-dimensional, so I don't know where you got that from. Okay, now let's have a look at it. It says, draw a head-to-tail diagram of all three forces acting on the object. And it says, indicate the position of magnitude, include all labels, and it says, use a scale of one centimeter equals one newton. Now, unfortunately, in the software that I'm using, I cannot use a ruler, and I don't have the centi one centimeters to one newtons, but you'll get the idea from what I'm drawing. But you guys should be using rulers, and you should be using the scales. Let's have a look at it. So it really doesn't matter which vector we start with, I'm going to start with my 5 newton vector, I'm going to draw it right here. So we're going to go, okay, 5 newtons, right? So that is 5 newtons horizontally. So that's that there. Okay, right. Then what happened, we need to draw it head to tail. So the next force that I'm looking at is this 4 newtons that is going straight up. So, so now we've got 4 newtons going straight up and I apologize that mine isn't straight up but like I said I don't have a ruler and now we're looking at three newtons at an angle of 45 degrees from the vertical so you should have had a protractor and you should have drawn in your three newtons over here three newtons over here and that is at an angle of 45 degrees and those are your three forces your five newtons your four newtons and three newtons and you will notice when you draw them as on head to tail that there is a gap okay and that gap is our resultant so then all you had to do and it said remember just labels is all you had to do was draw your resultant in and label it as R you didn't have to work out how big that resultant was in fact it asks you to do that much later in the question. So that there is the correct answer for draw a head to tail diagram of all three forces acting on the object indicating the position of magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, and your mark allocation was very simple. It was one, two, three, and four. So that was how you were supposed to draw this triangle. Okay, the next question says 2.2, the object is not stationary. Explain the statement by referring to the diagram drawn in question 2.1. Now, admittedly, a lot of you didn't get this drawing, so explaining it with reference to that wouldn't help, was a bit difficult for you. But if you gave me anything along the lines of that there was a resultant, and because there was a resultant, that meant that there was an acceleration, which meant there was a net force, that meant that it could not be stationary. So anything along the lines of that, that because there's a resultant force, F res, it meant that it was mass times acceleration, and a resultant force means you have to acceleration, therefore it cannot be stationary. And that was the answer. Okay, 2.3, it says what is this force that must, what is the force that must be applied to the object in order to keep it stationary called? Okay, in other words, they want to know, let's just change color, good green, they want to know what force do I need to apply to make the stationary? So this is the resultant force, this is the force that actually is going to be happening. So what do I want? I want a force that is equal but opposite in direction. And that is called equilibrant. 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 Okay. Right. Now, finally, it says 2.4. Now, I'll calculate the magnet direction of the force mentioned in question 2.1. Okay. The resultant force. And show all calculations. And this is where this question <laughs> really went wrong. So, we're going to take it nice and slowly. Okay. So, do you agree that we have got a 5 Newton horizontal component and then we've got a 4 Newton vertical and then we've got this 3 Newtons at an angle of 45 degrees, at an angle of 45 degrees with vertical going down. So, if we had to look at it, this resultant is made up of the horizontal component of this, which is the 5, but this 3 Newtons here 
I can redraw. I can redraw it over here. Right? Three newtons. And it is made up of two components. It is made up of a vertical component going down. And it is made up of a horizontal component going across. Right? In other words, if I wanted to get from here to here, I could go horizontally across and vertically down and then that would form a right angle triangle and that's exactly what I've drawn here I can go vertically down horizontally across and why do I need to know that because this horizontal component works against the five newtons that is horizontal and this vertical component works against the four newtons which is vertically upwards okay so let's look first of all at our horizontal components so you know that this angle here is 45 degrees okay and we know that that's 90 degrees because the components are always perpendicular so we need to use Sarkatoa okay and we want the horizontal component and if we are looking at this angle here which is 45 degrees then this is the opposite side okay and that's the hypotenuse so we are looking at sine so we can say sine of 45 degrees equals the opposite which is the horizontal component over 3 and then if we multiply it across, it becomes 3 sine of 45 degrees, which is equal to 2.12 newtons. Okay, so what does that mean to us? It means to us that we have got 5 newtons going across, and I'm actually going to draw it here. We've got 5 newtons going across there, okay, which is that component there plus we've got or minus okay at 2.12 but remember we don't minus we put them in the opposite direction 2.12 newtons going in this direction because remember this is going that way so therefore our resultant horizontal vector okay our resultant horizontal vector is going to be 2.12 88 newtons so that is our resultant horizontal vector okay which I'll redraw in a minute okay now let's look at the vertical component of that the vertical component because this is a 45 degree angle is going to be exactly the same but I will prove it to you so I'm going to erase this writing here and I'm going to change to green okay and now we're looking for the vertical component so the vertical component if we're still using this 45 degrees is now the adjacent side so we're now looking at cos so we're going to go cos of 45 degrees equals the adjacent side which is the vertical component over 3 so it becomes 3 cos 45 degrees which is 2.12 newtons amazing but this is which way this is down okay because the three newtons is going down so this vertical component is down so now if we're looking at the vertical components now again again change to yellow we've got actually it's changed to white we've got the five newtons sorry the four newtons we've got the four newtons going up we've got the 2.12 newtons going down so our resultant our resultant is going to be 1.88 newtons so now we can do a new triangle just using our two resultants okay so we're going to do a new triangle and I'm going to again change to white and we're going to draw it over here so now we've got our resultant vertical component of 2.88 newtons 2.88 we have a resultant vertical component up which is 1.88 newtons so therefore our resultant that there is the studio this guy okay is this guy okay and we want to know what 
we want to know the magnitude and direction of this resultant force. So again we're going to use well there are a couple things we can use. We could have either gone Sokotoa which we could have got for R or we could use Pythagoras and I personally like Pythagoras so we're going to use Pythagoras. So we're going to go R is equal to the square root of 1.88 squared plus 2.88 all squared, which equals the size of 3.44 newtons. So the size of this resultant, okay, is 3.44 newtons, right? Next, it's going to be, we need the angle. Now the angle is obviously, well there are a couple ways we can think about this, but do you agree that that angle there is this angle here? is that angle there, right? But remember that is north. Okay, so let's find this angle theta and there are a couple ways you can do it. I like to work with what we already know, not what we've worked out, just now we messed that up by mistake. So I'm going to work with the 1.88 and 2.88 which means this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side which means we are working with tan. So I'm going to say tan of theta is equal to 1.88 over 2.88 so you need to second function that to get the angle of theta and theta therefore is 33.14 degrees. So the size of this angle is 33.14 degrees. So your options of giving my direction can either be well that is 33.14 degrees north of east. In other words I'm going there's east and I'm going north of east by the size of 33.14 degrees. Or, or I can subtract from 90 and I can give that there on a bearing. So I go 90 minus 33.14 degrees and that is a bearing a bearing of 58.86 degrees. Now remember bearing is always from north clockwise. And that is question two. 